so you're beholden to the organization and is the organization more focused on how successful the team is long term than how they perform this season? I think it's both. Uh, you know, I think well, at the deadline the it can't be both, Craig. Here. At the deadline it can't be both, right? You either are adding or you're not. Uh, you're adding or you're not, but I think you can be mindful of both the the short term and the long term, right? Like I think you look at the last 15 or 20 years or so in this organization, there have been you know, absolute peaks um, and there have also been last place finishes. I think what I've been talking about for, you know, for a number of months now is building consistency and trying to avoid this kind of boom and bust cycle um, that has plagued the organization for a while. And uh, I think you have to look at both the short term and the long term in order to do that. But the long term organization, the leader of the on-field product is sitting here with 81, 82 games left under contract with the organization. So I don't know why you got to where you are, but if it was just up to you and not up to John Henry or Sam Kennedy or anybody else, do you believe Alex Cora should be extended and be the manager long-term? You know, I think those conversations are going to take place between Alex and me. I think that, you know, we've got a strong relationship. It's growing. Um, I think we feel very comfortable having honest conversations with each other. Um, and I think neither of us is interested in this becoming a distraction what's happening on the field. And I think, you know, if we look at what is happening on the field, we've done a pretty good job of ensuring that that doesn't become the case. Let me ask it a different way. Do you know who Alex Cora's three favorite musical artists are? <laughs> <laughs> I haven't asked that question. I should, um, but I fear that, you know, it takes weeks and weeks and weeks for him to get back to me similar to how I've been unable to answer you guys. <laughs> um, do you agree with Zach Kelly, who said he thinks it's ridiculous that Jaron Duran is 19th, I believe, uh, when it comes to outfielders in all-star voting? I mean, I'm not sure what more... Jaron can do. Uh, you know, when you look at offensive production, defense, the you know, his ability to steal base. I mean, but he and Hammy, right, are top I think seven in the league in stolen bases. Uh he's, you know, solidified the leadoff spot. He's on base to, you know, to start off, it seems like nearly every game. Um, you know, he is kind of the pulse of this team right now. I don't know what more needs to happen for him to be an all-star. So, I mean, yes, it's ridiculous. Uh, I mean, this guy has been as valuable as, you know, kind of by, by almost any measure, this guy has been as valuable as any other player in baseball. Craig, Bayo had a tough start uh, this week. The the pushing back his next start, what do you hope uh, can come out of that period of time that you guys are going to push it off? Because I think going into the season, he was expected to be your guys' ace. Hasn't really panned out that way. Yeah, I, I don't think there's, you know, uh, any any question uh, that he's struggled. Uh, physically, he feels really good. I think, um, you know, this is kind of the most extended struggle that he's had in a while, and he's working through the the emotions. But I think most importantly, um, by pushing it back, it gives him two things. One is just the chance to catch his breath a little bit. The other is to get on the mound uh, twice, you know, and, and kind of work through some things with Andrew and the rest of the pitching group. Um, but, you know, I think most importantly, he feels physically pretty good. This, the raw stuff is as good as at any point that we've seen it. Um, I think there's been, you know, some subtle changes to some of this pitch shapes, but mo mostly uh, we just want to give him a little bit of a breather uh, and, and a chance to get on the mound and do what he, you know, we're, we know he's capable of and something that he's done for, uh, you know, for, for a while. Um, and that's to keep us in ball games, pitch deep into games. And, uh, you know, we're, we're, Excited about the fact that, you know, Wink came up uh, and, and threw, you know, what amounts to essentially a quality start out of the bullpen a couple days ago. And uh, when we sent him down, that conversation was about trying to build him out as a starter because we believe that he has that capability. And we saw this last few turns through in Worcester. And then, what you know, what we saw the other day is uh, solidifying that optimism. As a, as a guy who pitched in this league, you know how important the mental part of it is. Do you think the the baby Pedro stuff got got into his head a little bit? You know, I'm not sure. I think uh, you know Brian has always been a pretty outgoing, fun loving guy um, with a big personality, and I think you know we've seen that the performance on the field has impacted the behavior off. I you know I don't want to speak to precisely what he's thinking or or you know how that 
pressure characterization may have affected him. Um, but I think, you know, when he's at his best, he is just this really enjoyable, outgoing guy to be around, and we're going to get that back. Now, Craig, I know you guys have been playing well, and so there's, you know, it's really hard to find maybe some of the things that you're struggling at a little bit. And I know you won't get into trade deadline talks, but if you were to look and look at this baseball team, what are some of the areas that you'd like to see them improve in? Yeah, you know, I mean, I think if if you just kind of go around the you know the the, the field, you could say that uh, you know once Casas got hurt, um, you know, we didn't have kind of the the clear replacement um, to to provide production at first base. Though I would say Dom, you know, as of late has started to swing the bat much better. Um, you know, and we feel uh, good with with where we are there. But are we getting, you know, kind of top of the league production at a first base uh, right now? Like, no, we're we're not. Um, you know, similarly, I would say with, with second base. Uh, you know, when we we sent Valdi down uh, a while ago and and wanted to give those every day at bats to Vaughn, and then Vaughn got hurt. Um, but you know, since Valdi, Valdi's come back, um, you know, he's swinging the bat really, really well. Um, so that's been really encouraging and, and a credit to, to him and the, to the PD staff. But you know, on the whole, we're not getting the production out of second base that we had anticipated. Um, you know, especially before Story had had gotten hurt, and you know, we tried to mix and match up the, up the middle. Um, I think out of the outfield, uh, we are getting quite a bit of production both on on offense and on defense which is which is great i know that the you know outfield defense has significantly improved relative to where it was last year um you know, hammy at, at shortstop has has been phenomenal uh, you know a guy who over the first few weeks uh when he came back up looked overmatched at times um but as a credit to him and the staff is really contributing and you know i think should be in, in the conversation um for for rookie of the year if you know if, if, if things trend in, in this direction and um you know, other than other than that, like, you know, I don't know that anybody would say they have enough starting pitching depth. I don't know that anybody would say that they wouldn't feel better if, you know, they had additional relief depth. Um, but, you know, hard to go position by position and say, you know, we're not pretty happy with the progress that is made and, and, and certainly wouldn't want to leave out Connor um, and the job that he's done behind the plate. Uh, Craig, one last one. Bre uh, Alex Corey yesterday told the afternoon show that he had told you in the front office and ownership that he didn't want to talk about the contract in season. He also said yesterday, as we alluded to, that Greg asked about being greedy about the deadline. Is it fair to say that your view of the organization and his view are different considering how much time he's remaining on co under contract versus where you are for the long-term future? You know, I, I'm not sure that, that that would be fair to say, just given the conversations that I've had with Alex. I told him from the very beginning, as as did he to me, that we needed to be honest with each other. And we've had conversations around roster construction, in-game strategy, uh, you know, kind of the overall health of the organization. I think we see things pretty similarly. Um, you know, we have, like I said earlier, we have different jobs. He should be consumed with doing everything he possibly can to win tonight's game. Um, well, tomorrow's game. <laughs> um, and, and, and I give him a ton of credit for, for doing that. I think, you know, we've seen in his managerial style a willingness to be aggressive and pinch hit early and, um, you know, move, move guys around the field. Like, that is exactly what you want out of your big league manager. Uh, when we have conversations in the office about how certain players fit into the bigger scheme or, um, you know, where the organization is going, I think we generally see things pretty similarly. So that being said, removing money and and uh, internal politics and all those things from the equation and sitting here as and even re removing your job title for a moment and looking at this as as somebody who played for the organization and is a fan of the Boston Red Sox do you do you want Alex Cora to be here for the future I think Alex is a, re a really, really good manager. Uh, I think he deserves a ton of praise for uh, the job that he has done to date. And I really enjoy and have enjoyed working with him. Um, beyond that, like I said, those conversations will take place between Alex and me. I feel like that is kind of the respectful thing to do. Um, and I think that's also the most productive thing but to do. I don't understand no, I that. Why wouldn't you just say you want him to be here? <laughs> that's a compliment. Yeah. That's not some it's, negative. Fans, I don't understand. The, yeah, the fans would like to know. Well, no, I know, and what I'm what I'm saying is, I think we are really lucky that he is the manager. That uh, you know our relationship is growing. That I don't think there's any way to simulate the emotion 
um, you know, as certain benchmarks in the season go through and you have to work through those things and, you know, ensure that it's the right fit on, on both sides, uh, which is, which is really, really important. Um, but again, kind of be, beyond that, I think those are conversations for Alex and me. All right, Craig, thanks for taking the time this morning. We will talk to you again soon.